G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to do a kiss pour today for you. One of those pours where you put colours in one, colours in the other and let them kiss up and let them pour down into one stream. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not sure where it started. I've seen a few of them on the um, different acrylic pouring groups on Facebook. So feel free to let me know where it originated. I'll just show you a couple of things before I start because I know some people like to see the dried products. This was my first attempt at the pink turquoise uh, flip cup pours. This one had a lot of black in it and I really wasn't happy with it so I did it again. That's just my thick card. You see it? It's dry now. It doesn't really warp. It's, it's dried well. Um, and then I did this one. I took out some of the black. So it's better, but still wasn't quite what I was after. So I did this five times, two cards, three canvases, and I finally got it right on number five. So stay tuned and watch those, see how they progressed. Right, back to the pour. So for my pouring medium, I am going back to my Floatrol and PVA and pouring medium mix. I prefer this when I do ring pours. The other, by glue and water mix, is just too much glue um, ratio and I don't get a good result. So I'm using this. And, oh, it's heavy. Right, so I have got two parts of my pouring medium to one part of paint in my cups. And I'm using Global. I've got this one here, which is a warm yellow and a warm red. So I'm kind of doing fire and ice. We've got the warm colours and the cool colours. I've got some white and then I've got a light turquoise which is called Peacock and a cool blue. So those are my colours. So I'm going to have white and two blues in this cup and white and two reds or oranges in that cup. So that's what I'm going to do. No silicone. Um, I've only got half the amount of white as I have to the colours. And my consistency, not quite as thick as I would have for my flip cups. Leaves a little mound and you can see the, the trace on the top of the cup there. So that's what that is. So let's get to layering. Move that out of the way and do this one first. So some white. And some blue. turquoise, the rest of the white, the rest of the blue, hopefully the consistency will be right for this type of pour, and the rest of the turquoise. So this card is a 30 centimeter by 40 centimeter card. I'm still getting so many questions about it, you guys. I've been telling you what it is for the last six months. And I've told you where the links are and where I get them and all that kind of thing. But I guess there's still new people coming along that haven't seen all my videos. Right, that one's done, move on. Um, it's box board, thick card. This one's I think about 700 grams in weight. Try and get as thick as you can so that it doesn't warp when it dries and I lay them on this cookie cooling rack so that the paint can just drop over. Uh, once it's been sitting for a couple of hours I'll transfer it over onto a piece of uh, grease proof baking paper and it can dry there. Nice and flat on my table. Um, yeah, as it says, it, you can, I'm not sure what you call it overseas. It's thick card, it's box board, maybe matting board, something like that. Just get as thick as you can. I have got links to it on my Australian Acrylic Pouring Group. There's links to eBay, there's links to Amazon, where I got it. But just search it, I'm sure you guys will find it how I found it initially just searched eBay 
I use eBay a lot in, in Australia, not so much Amazon, but certainly do use eBay. Now, I've got a little bit of extra white that I made up that I didn't use in those two um, for my corners if I need it. So that's that, and I thinned it out just a touch. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, just making a shadow. Oops, that's also making a shadow. Just get everything out of the way so I don't have shadows. I've got a big light over there in the corner. I'm going to just pop that under there. So I would like to tilt it a little bit. Well, that might be too much of an angle. I'll get something smaller. This will work. Oops, dropped it. This little plastic tray. I'll just turn that upside down. That should work. Just to lift it up a little bit. Poke it under there so I don't get it covered in paint. Alright, so what I want to do is start up here and just let the paint flow down. So I'm going to, I've used cardboard cups so that I can pinch the edge there. And I'm pinching the edge of where the colours got poured in. So there we go. Now, I think I'm not going to be able to do it this way. So I'm going to come and stand at the head here. Oh, I know I'm in the, in the light, but hey, it's all right. Um, so I'm going to let these two colours of paint come out together and kiss up, I guess, is where the terminology came from for a kiss pour, and just let them pour down together. All right, are we ready? Let's go. Kissing time. Kiss, kiss. Off we go. Oops, I'm watching what the paint's doing as it comes out and not watching what it's doing on the surface. I'm trying to pour them at the same speed. There we go, there comes my red and my blue. So I guess I'll get a bit of a purple from that. Go a little bit closer to the surface just so that my paint doesn't drop down from such a height and hopefully won't muddy too much. So I'm trying not to actually let the two cups touch, the cardboard touch. Just want the paint to flow into the other paint. I'm not going very straight, am I? Paint's going off to the side. Not quite sure how much I'm going to need, but let's just use it all. I've made it, so let's use it. All right, I'm just going to drag that straight off like that. There we go, and quickly catch it because it's running away. Well, that was fun. Making a mess. So, definitely got blues on the one side, oranges on the other. Okay, I think I'll, do I want some white? I'll just pop a little bit of white on my corners. This is the white that I thinned out a little bit of with water just to make it flow a little bit easier. And uh, if I end up having some white on the corners, that's okay. There's white in the center, the white corners would match nicely. And if I do go over the top with, of the white, then that won't matter either. Okay, uh, let's torch just to get the bubbles out because that was quite a fast pull. I can see some bubbles. May get a few little cells popping up as well because my mix has got Floetrol in it. And Floetrol has got an oil in it. It's a paint conditioner, so it may give me some cells. Now, where do I want to go first? I think I want to go up first because I don't really like that there. So let's go up to this corner here. I think I will go over the corner. Maybe, we'll see what happens.
as I said, I don't really like this up here, this last bit, so I'm going to take that off. So I'll go over to the side and up at the same time to get rid of that. And I'll just leave a little white corner on both, just so that it matches. All right. Oh, there's a lot of paint come off, hasn't there? I probably didn't need all that paint. I should work out how much I actually need. Well, this is really pretty on this side. Not so keen on that side. I don't know why it's different. Let's just take the weight of the paint back to the centre and then I'll go straight down and stretch that out a little bit. And over to that corner there. I think I'll go over the side there. And come back. Hang on to my corner so I don't lose it. I've done that before. The whole card slid off. Going down and to the corner at the same time. Just go over and back again. Alrighty. Now I've got a lot of blue down here, so I need to get rid of some of that and bring my orange back down again. Because I do prefer the orange the most. So just playing with the composition now. I think I might get rid of some of this blue. And maybe just leave it like that, hey? It kind of looks like flames there. Touch up my little corners where I put my fingers in them. Go. All right, let's torch again. All right, clean up the edges. So, way too much paint. I lost a lot of the paint, lost a lot of the design. Probably only need about 400 grams of paint for this size with a ring pour. Um, if we're doing a flip cup, I need about 600, but um, for this technique, I don't need as much. So I'll have another go at it. That was just my first kiss pour, so I'll have another go at it and reduce the amount of paint. Just cleaning this. <laughs> and, um, and I'll have another go and, and see what we think of less paint. Oh, I've made such a mess to clean all this up. Right. But that's quite pretty, isn't it? Happy with that. Really like this these flamey bits here. If you turn it around that way, look at that. It looks as if it's it's almost like a wave or it's flames. Licking the ocean. Anyway, I'll take you in for a close up. Climb up onto my ladder so I can see what's happening. Alrighty, so there we go. My attempt at a kiss paw. I don't love, love, love it, but hey, it's for a first go. Uh, maybe I can try making my paints a little bit thicker so that they don't blend so much. I can try that. Maybe I can do a one-to-one -one instead of a two-to-one to see what effect I get. And definitely cut back on the amount of paint. I, I tilted a lot off. 
didn't need to tilt that much off. Okay, so um, hope you enjoyed that. Have a go. It was fun. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.